from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now!, breaking with convention, war, peace, and the presidency. No way, no how, no McCain. Barack Obama is my candidate, and he must be our president. In her highly anticipated address at the Democratic convention, Hillary Rodham Clinton calls on her supporters to unite behind Barack Obama. We'll play highlights of her address, then a roundtable discussion. Is the Clinton-Obama divide lessening? We'll speak with a staunch Democratic delegate for Hillary Clinton, the founder of Black Women for Obama, and Dolores Huerta, who supported Clinton, now backs Obama. Then nearly 600 workers are arrested in an electrical equipment factory in Mississippi in the largest immigration raid in U.S. history. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting live from Denver. In Afghanistan, a U.N. probe has backed claims of a massive civilian death toll from a U.S. airstrike last Thursday. The U.N. mission in Kabul says investigators found some 90 civilians, including 60 children, were killed in the attack. There are concerns the toll could mount once the rubble is cleared. The slain children were said to be between the ages of three months months and 16 years. All died while they slept. Another 15 people were injured if confirmed the strike would be the deadliest known U.S. attack on Afghan civilians since the invasion of 2001. The Pentagon says it's investigating after initially claiming 25 militants and five civilians were killed. Here in Denver, Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton headlined the second night of the Democratic National Convention with an appeal to unite behind Senator, Senator Barack Obama. It is to take back the country we love. And whether you voted for me or you voted for Barack, the time is now to unite as a single party with a single purpose. Despite the call for party unity, aides say tensions remain between the Clinton and Obama camps over their tightly fought race for the Democratic nomination. Clinton's staffers reportedly refused to let the Obama campaign approve her final remarks. Clinton aides told The New York Times her remarks were partly tuned to leave the door open for a presidential run in 2012. The most passionate address of the day came from another former Democratic presidential hopeful, Congress member Dennis Kucinich. In an afternoon speech, Kucinich said the Bush administration invaded Iraq for oil. He also warned of the looming threat of a U.S. attack on Iran. Wake up, America. In 2001, the oil companies, the war contractors, and the neocon artists seized the economy and added $4 trillion of unproductive spending to the national debt. We now pay four times more for defense, three times more for gasoline and home heating oil, and twice what we pay for Meanwhile, healthcare. Obama's vice presidential candidate, Senator Joe Biden, praised Obama and his wife, Michelle. I ran against him, man. I thought I should be president, you know? <laughs> I ran like the devil. But I tell you what, I watched something, and it's about the forum, and I'll sit down. These folks get it. They've touched, they've tapped into. They've tapped into a fundamental essence of what the country is. That people, they don't want you to give them a handout. They want you to give them a chance. In Iraq, at least 28 people were killed in a suicide bombing in the northern Diyala province. The attack targeted a crowd of police recruits. Another 45 people were wounded. In other Iraq news, two non-commissioned military officers have admitted to shooting dead four handcuffed and blindfolded Iraqi prisoners. In sworn statements, the officers say they acted along with a third to kill the prisoners and move their bodies into a Baghdad canal. Attorneys for the officers say they expect their clients to face murder charges. Meanwhile, a federal judge has upheld civilian 
charges against a former soldier accused in the rape and murder of an Iraqi teenager and the killing of her family in 2006. Stephen Green faces charges as the accused ringleader in raping and murdering 14-year-old Abir Qasim Hamza al-Janabi and killing her parents and five-year-old sister. Green had challenged a law that allowed the government to indict him on civilian charges for crimes committed while serving in the military. But on Tuesday, District Judge Thomas Russell rejected Green's petition and said the case can proceed. Environmental news, international researchers have found Arctic sea ice has shrunk to the second lowest level since record-keeping began three decades ago. The International Arctic Research Center says the Arctic ice is now two million square miles below its average size. The disparities on place to break the 2002nd record, the 2007 record for lowest sea ice. In Los Angeles, an African-American woman is claiming she was forced out of a federal building for wearing a T-shirt promoting lesbianism. L Lapras Gilbert says a security guard threatened her with arrest and ordered her to leave. Her shirt said lesbian.com. The guard worked for Paragon Security, a private company under contract with the Department of Homeland Security. Honduras has become the latest Latin American country to join ALBA, the Bolivarian alternative of the Americas. ALBA was established as a counterweight to U.S.-led trade agreements in Latin America. Honduran officials say founding member of Venezuela has offered to double its foreign aid, dwarfing assistance from U.S.-controlled bodies like the World Bank. The move marks a sign of further rejection of U.S. influence in Latin America. In the 1980s, Honduras was the staging ground for the U.S.-led effort to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is also an ALBA member, along with Cuba, Bolivia, and Dominica. The peace activist Cindy Sheehan may have been put under surveillance here in Denver. In an email to supporters, Sheehan reports she returned to her hotel room to find a man taking apart her phone with a screwdriver. Sheehan says she was told the hotel was having problems with its phones. Denver police are downplaying the severity of an alleged plot to assassinate Barack Obama. Four men were arrested Sunday carrying weapons and camouflage. Denver Detective Marcus Dudley described what was seized. The sergeant discovered inside his truck a bulletproof vest, two rifles, ammunition, walkie-talkies, and drugs. One scope. Uh, was discovered with one of the rifles. The ammunition, the weapons, um, clearly that would give one great concern. Denver police say although the four suspects had discussed killing Obama, they had not planned to put it into action. Police say the accused were methamphetamine addicts who were impaired at the time they discussed Obama. And back at the convention, tonight's headlining speakers include former President Bill Clinton. While Clinton's being given a prime time slot, controversy still surrounds former President Jimmy Carter's diminished role at the convention. Carter was removed from Monday a speaker's list and what appeared to be a last-minute change. Instead, Carter was shown in a three-minute videotaped address focusing on his work around Hurricane Katrina. He was then brought onto the stage for a 90-second ovation for the crowd with his wife, Rosalind. The move immediately fueled speculation Carter's being sidelined for his outspoken criticism of the Bush administration and Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza. I asked President Carter about his apparent emotion in the halls of the convention center afterwards. We were hoping to hear you tonight. What happened? Well, I was on a program. Did you speak? No, I had a uh, I know, I saw video. you wave. No. Well, we had a video ahead of time. You yeah, didn't see I the movie. The that was it. Very good. That was it. What message do you have for Barack Obama? How to avoid getting swift voted? Uh, I think he's going to be immune from that because it, the truth will emerge no matter how much the Republicans try to distort the truth. So I have confidence in him. And what do you think of the choice of Biden? Perfect. President Jimmy Carter, after he did not address the Democratic Convention on Monday night. I spoke to him in the halls of the Pepsi Convention Center. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. We are breaking with convention, war, peace, and the presidency, broadcasting from the Five Points neighborhood of Denver.